Our next lecture is on ground current pollution. Ground current pollution has been around since at least the 1940s and was first noticed on farms, but this is a problem in urban settings as well. We have anecdotal evidence that there is, it can contribute to cancer. Most of the research shows adverse reproductive effects on farm animals, and these animals also demonstrate behavioral problems. Before we can discuss ground current, we need to understand the concept of a circuit in electricity. With direct current, a battery, for example, we need to connect both ends of the battery to light a light bulb. We are creating a circuit, which is a route or path, that finishes at the point in which it began. An electric circuit refers to the flow of electrons shown here by little blue figures with a negative charge. With alternating current, we also need to create a circuit. And here we see the familiar generation, transmission, distribution of electricity. A fault in the wire anywhere will lead to power failure. With a primary distribution line, we have three hot wires, a neutral wire for the return current. The bottom wire you see here is for communication and isn't part of the electric grid. This is called a four-wire system. Inside buildings, we have a hot wire, a neutral wire, and a ground. Ground current refers to electric current flowing along the ground. We can measure it by placing two metal rods into the ground, connecting them with an electrical wire, and connecting the wire to an oscilloscope. If there is current flowing along the ground, it will preferentially flow along the metal and recorded on the oscilloscope. Two laws are important. Ohm's law states that a current flows along the path of least resistance, and Kirchhoff's law states that a current will take any and all paths. This graph shows ground current pollution on a dairy farm in Ontario. Two patterns are obvious. Kilohertz frequencies riding on a 60 hertz sine wave. Ideally, the 60 hertz wave should be less than 500 millivolts per meter, and the kilohertz wave should be less than 10 millivolts per meter to protect livestock. A cow standing on the ground will have the current flow up one leg and out the other. This is called step potential. The same happens to a person even though he is wearing shoes, and this is due to capacitive coupling. The best way to demonstrate capacitive coupling is with two magnets that are brought close to each other. If one magnet jiggles, it will cause the other magnet to jiggle even though they are not in contact. Cows are affected by step potential, hoof to hoof, and touch potential, mouth to hoof. The greater the potential difference between body parts in contact with the ground or an object, the greater the pressure and the greater the flow of electrons. Now for something a bit different. I made this animated video a few years ago to explain ground current. Let's watch. Hi, it's me again, Dr. Magda Havas. Today we are going to watch a demonstration of ground current in a lab. Do you recall when I mentioned in a previous video that electricity can flow along the ground. The concept of electricity flowing through the ground is difficult for some people to imagine, so a good friend of mine offered to help. This is Ralph Frederick, and this is what Ralph really looks like. Ralph, would you like to explain what you did? I started with a wooden box to which I added potting soil, slightly moistened. I then added wooden pegs and attached an LED bulb to the last peg. Next, I took a variable transformer that allows me to increase the voltage. I then connected an electrical wire to the transformer and to the light bulb. The wire in red is the hot wire. The wire in blue is the neutral wire that completes the circuit. When I turn on the transformer, the light bulb glows. If I disconnect the neutral or the return wire, the light bulb turns off. The circuit is now broken as there is no wire to return the electrons to their source. If I take the neutral wire and cut it into two pieces, 
I can attach one of the two wires to the light bulb and place the end in the moist soil. I can then take the other wire, attach it to the transformer and place the end of the wire into the soil as well. As you can see, the two wires are not touching. When I turn on the transformer, if the light bulb turns on, it means that there is current flowing through the soil. If we could see the electricity, this is what it might look like. There would be a gradient of electrons along the length of the earth table flowing through the moist soil. As many of you may recall from high school physics, opposite charges attract, and like charges repel. The negatively charged electrons are moving along the soil and this creates a current. The definition of a current is moving electrons. There are two important laws that we need to remember. The first is Ohm's law. Current will travel along the path of least resistance. What this means is that current will flow preferentially along conductive material, like metal pipes or wires. The second is Kirchhoff's law. Current will take any and all paths. Current will also flow along a metal fence, wet soil, and through animals and people since we are highly conductive. Now, let's return to Ralph's earth table. Ralph did something intriguing. He took copper wire and fashioned it into a person with two legs and connected an LED bulb for the head. When Ralph placed the figure in the soil, its head lit up. This means there is a current flowing through the wire figure, enough of a current to light the bulb. However, when the figure was placed perpendicular to the flow of electricity, the light bulb stayed off. Ralph, can you explain this? Remember that current refers to moving electrons. Electrons move from an area of high potential to an area of low potential. Just like water flowing downhill. The copper figure on the left has an electron gradient between the two copper feet. So electrons flow from high potential to low potential and the current lights the bulb. The copper figure on the right has both feet at the same potential. So there is no electron flow no current, and the light remains off. If Ralph, or a cow, stood on this earth table, current would flow through both of their bodies, if their feet were at different electrical potentials. Here's a quiz for you. Which Ralph has the most current flowing through his body? Ralph number one, number two, or number three? The correct answer is, Ralph number two. Let me explain. The further apart the feet, the greater the electrical potential difference between the feet, and the greater the flow of electrons. Now, which Ralph has the least amount of current flowing through his body? If you answered number three, you are correct. Standing on one foot or keeping your feet close together reduces current flowing through your body. In this case, Ralph number three is an open circuit, since only one foot is in touch with the ground. Electrons from the ground are not flowing through his body. By lifting one foot, you can break the circuit. That is why cows, on a farm with ground current, keep lifting their feet. They are breaking the circuit and reducing the electrons flowing through their body. Remember when I showed you in the first video what electricity flowing through the ground looks like? Two patterns were evident. The 60 cycle or 60 hertz pattern shown in red and the thousands of cycles or kilohertz pattern, shown in blue. Ralph did a demonstration of ground current and showed that 60 hertz frequencies can flow through soil. Can higher frequencies do the same? Watch our next video and find out. If you would like to contact Ralph, he can be reached at the email below. I can be reached via my website. Thanks for watching. This was fun. Can hardly wait to do the next video. Ralph, I think the camera is still rolling. Hi. Hi. I'm back. Today we are going to watch a demonstration of high-frequency electromagnetic energy flowing through soil. Ralph Frederick is back by popular demand. In a previous video, Ralph demonstrated his Frederick Earth table. In that demonstration, Ralph showed us that current can flow through moist soil. 
Enough current was generated to light an LED bulb placed in the soil when that bulb had each copper foot at a different electrical potential. However, when the electrical potential at both copper feet was the same, nothing happened. The bulb stayed off. Ralph designed the Frederick Earth table to demonstrate that frequencies used for electricity, referred to as power frequencies, can flow along soil. These frequencies are at 60 Hz in North America and 50 Hz elsewhere. But, if you recall, we saw higher frequencies flowing along the soil on Dave's scope meter. These higher frequencies have different properties and different biological effects. It is important to realize that 60 Hz and kilohertz frequencies can be present on farms. They both need to be monitored as they have different effects and different sources. How is Ralph going to demonstrate these higher frequencies flowing through soil? Ralph, I'm turning it over to you. I started with a wooden box to which I added potting soil, slightly moistened. I then added an audio oscillator and placed the two leads into the soil. This allows me to change the frequency from 10 Hz to 1 million Hz. The audio oscillator produces one frequency, or tone, at a time. At the other end of the Frederick Earth table I added an audio amplifier as shown here. When I turned both units on, we had sound. The human ear is capable of detecting sound frequencies between 20 and 20,000 Hz. Although we lose some of this range as we age, this demonstrates that the higher frequencies had to flow through the soil to be picked up by the amplifier. To ensure this was the case, I parted the soil in the earth table. And as soon as I did, the sound stopped. As I sprinkled the soil back, and formed a soil bridge, the sound started again. This clearly demonstrates that the frequency from the audio oscillator is picked up by the audio amplifier as it travels through the soil. Then I did something else. I parted the soil again. This time I placed one hand on top of the soil on the left and the other hand on top of the soil on the right. As soon as both my hands were in contact with the soil we could hear the tone again. The frequency had to pass through my body. Ralph, this is an excellent demonstration showing that frequencies, higher than power frequencies, can flow along soil and can pass through a human body. This is exactly what is happening to the cows on a farm with high-frequency ground current. This cow has electrodes attached to her front and hind legs. The sharp lines in the top graph are the high-frequency voltages flowing across the cow's body. Ralph then got a bit carried away and he started to play the soil like a piano. This is amazing. Kids would love to play with something like this. Ralph. Remember what is happening. Those high frequencies are flowing through your body and that is not healthy. Yes, of course. I got a bit carried away. We are at the end of this video demonstration of high frequency ground current flowing through soil and through Ralph's body. If you would like to contact Ralph, he can be reached at the email below. I can be reached via my website. Thanks for watching and please do not try this demonstration unless you know what you are doing. Playing with electricity can be very dangerous. Yes, it can. And electricity flowing through the ground can be dangerous as well. Join us next time for more videos on ground current pollution. Sorry about that, Ralph. I got a bit carried away trying to make the point that ground current hurts. Contact current can come into a home through plumbing. Here's the scope meter connected to the faucet and the floor, representing a person turning on the water. And this is what the meter showed for sink to floor readings. 1,664 microamps sink to floor. 18 microamps have been associated with cancer. In this kitchen, the levels are 92 times higher than levels associated with cancer. And how do we know that ground current can contribute to cancer? Well, Nancy Wertheimer and Ed Leeper are back. They published this paper in 1995. 
They reported an increased cancer risk for children exposed to ground current in their home through plumbing. They measured the magnetic field, which is produced by current, and reported an odds ratio of four that is statistically significant. The four represents a four-fold increased risk of cancer. They state the cancer risk is increased among persons with elevated magnetic field exposure from residential ground current. Another way to determine if the source is the electric utility is to measure the primary neutral to earth voltage. Once we know that there is a ground current problem, then we can measure the electrical potential difference between the primary neutral on a distribution line and the earth. A third verification is that the frequency fingerprint will be similar for both measurements. In North America, cities were connected to the electric grid before farms. In the 1940s and 50s, the utility wanted to spend as little money as possible servicing farms, so they decided to forego the neutral wire, the fourth wire, and use the earth to complete the circuit. This is called an earth return. As soon as this happened, farmers started to complain because their livestock were getting sick. <clears throat> In the 1970s, the oil embargo encouraged research on energy efficiency and electronics, and this increased dirty electricity. In the 1990s, the increasing energy consumption and the dirty electricity put such a strain on the antiquated distribution lines that the utility, in order to save money, connected the neutral wire to ground and thus used the earth again in their electrical network with obvious consequences. With more electricity flowing through the ground, livestock become sick and farm income plummets. When the earth returns were used in some rural areas prior to the 1960s, they became notorious offenders in dairy areas because circulating currents often cause both step and touch potentials. In some cases, they had adverse effects on milking operations by shocking the cattle when they were connected to the milking machines, and this affected their feeding. Prior to the oil embargo, most of the uses of electricity involved simple motors and bulbs. These produce linear loads. The electronics produce nonlinear loads that are difficult to balance. They overload neutral wires, and they are biologically harmful. Our use of electricity continues to grow, and many of the existing power line neutrals are inadequate to deal with the increasing load. The solution? We need more capacity on the neutral wire. One solution is a thicker neutral wire. Another solution is to have two neutral wires rather than one. This is called the five wire system. And this is what the utilities have done. They connected the neutral wire to earth. And now 70% of the return current through the ground when it should be along a neutral wire. Ontario has faced a serious ground current problem since the 1990s. And in 2007, the Ontario Energy Board identified mitigation options that include the ones I've mentioned, a thicker neutral wire or a five wire system. Now for some more animated videos on ground current and animal health. I'm going to show you three sets of animated videos. There is some repetition in them for which I apologize. Hi, it's me again. Dr. Magda Havas, and today we are going to learn how ground current affects farm animals, especially dairy cows. As you know, electricity can flow along the ground. This electricity is called ground current and refers to moving electrons. An animal, in contact with the ground, can have electricity flowing through its body. Let's visit a farm with a ground current problem. This cow is uncomfortable. She continuously lifts one foot and then the other. 
there is current flowing through her body and each time she lifts a foot she breaks the circuit. This cow is also lifting her front feet. She has swollen hocks and an open sore on her back right leg. That won't heal. Once a cow can no longer stand up, she is shipped. This cow has an open sore and swollen hocks like the other cows in the barn. How does ground current affect dairy cows? Let's ask Dr. Don Hillman. Dr. Hillman is Professor Emeritus at Michigan State University in East Lansing, Michigan. He has done research with ground current for decades and is a leading authority. Don, can you tell us how ground current affects dairy cows? You have already mentioned some of the effects, namely, hoof lifting, tail swishing, swollen hocks, and open sores that won't heal. A list of effects can be seen in this chart. We can go through them one at a time. Before we do that, I noticed that you refer to ground current as stray voltage. Can you explain that? Yes. Stray voltage was the term that was used for many years. It is easier to measure voltage than to measure current. Technically they are not the same, but some people use them interchangeably. Dingle voltage was also commonly used, and today, some would like to refer to it as uncontrolled electricity. According to your chart, ground current affects milk production and quality, herd health, nutrition and water uptake, reproduction and behavior, which we already mentioned. That's going to take a bit of time. Let's finish the discussion about behavior and leave the rest for another video. That sounds good. Under behavior, you mention reluctance to enter milking parlor and extreme nervousness in milking parlor. Can you elaborate? If the floor in the milking parlor is at a different electrical potential than the floor in the barn, and it often is on a farm with a ground current problem, then electrons will flow through the cow's body and she will experience a shock. The amount of shock depends on the voltage difference between the two floors. Once she is in the milking parlor she should be fine, until they attach the milking machine to her udder. Once again she can receive a shock and the udders are very sensitive. How comfortable a cow is in the milking parlor will determine how quickly she lets down her milk, but we'll talk about that later. If she continues to get shocks, she may kick at the milker. You also mention reluctance to use water bowls or metallic feeders. As you know, metal is highly conductive. Electrons can flow between the metal and the cow, and she will receive a shock, and that shock can be quite painful. A cow that drinks less will produce less milk. And finally, we have dancing cows. Dave Stetzer has a video that demonstrates this terrible situation. This cow has electrodes placed on front and back legs. The voltage differential between the legs are monitored in the screen at the top of the video. Note that this video is at twice normal speed. Let's watch the video clip. This shows a cow's reaction after power to the farm has been completely disconnected. Based on a Minnesota study, it is apparent that this cow is experiencing severe discomfort. Don, this is terrible. Those animals must be highly stressed. Very hard on the farmers as well. But expect we will learn more about this in the next video. Join us next time and learn about ground current effects on cow health and productivity. See you soon. And thanks for watching. Hi and welcome back to part 2. How Ground Current Affects Dairy Cow Health and Productivity Dr. Don Hillman is joining us again to discuss cow health on farms with a ground current problem. Welcome back, Don. The last time we spoke we discussed how dairy cows respond to ground current pollution. We focused on behavior. What are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about milk production and herd health. These are the key effects of ground current on milk production. On a dairy farm, 
Producing a lot of high-quality milk is the primary function of dairy cows. Something that reduces milk production can severely affect farm income. As you know, cows are milked twice a day, and the farmer knows how much each cow produces. This provides a lot of information to the farmer. I work with farmers that have a ground current problem. One of those farmers, Farmer Pete, offered to share some of his records with us. This shows Farmer Pete's milk production per cow from 2003 to 2014. The provincial average is in blue. Farmer Pete's production is in red. The provincial average is increasing slightly. Farmer Pete's production is going down. Milk and dairy products are an important part of the agricultural industry in Canada, and especially in Ontario. The Canadian dairy industry is worth $10 billion annually. Dairy is an important agricultural industry in Michigan as well. I was involved with a stray voltage or ground current case in Michigan. I was working with one of the top dairy farmers in the state. In the early 1990s his cows appeared to be agitated. They started kicking when they were being milked. Milk production dropped, and he became 45th in the state for milk yield. Here's a graph that shows the amount of milk produced by each cow during the year. The values fluctuate between 22 and 23,000 pounds per cow. What happened in 1998? As you can see, milk yield increased by 4,000 pounds per cow. That year the electrical utility replaced the distribution line and his milk production immediately increased. This is a good news story. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the electric utility fixed the problem in areas where they are contributing to ground current pollution? Was he the only farmer affected by ground current? No. In 1995, 255 farmers in Michigan filed stray voltage complaints. I calculated total costs including damages, expert and court fees, and cost of outside counsel. This came to $75 million over nine years or just over $8 million a year. Are farmers successful with their lawsuits? No. Some may settle out of court, often with a gag order, which means they are unable to disclose the value of the settlement. Most give up because they can't bear the delays, the costs and the stress placed on their family. In 2008, a French court ruled in favor of farmers and awarded a settlement of almost 400,000 euros. It seems that French farmers are more successful than farmers in North America. Let's discuss somatic cell count. What is a somatic cell and why is it important? Somatic cells are an indicator of milk quality. They consist largely of white blood cells that increase in the milk in response to pathogenic bacteria and thus reflect milk safety. When an animal is stressed or is ill, somatic cell numbers increase. When this happens her milk cannot be sold, and this places a financial burden on farmers. Why is lengthening milking time important? Today it takes about 5 minutes to milk a cow with an automated milking system. Several cows can be milked simultaneously. Adding even a few minutes per cow to the milking time can increase the workload for farmers that have large herds. To make matters worse, some cows won't let down all their milk. This cow has a healthy udder, but you can see she has more milk in the two hind quarters than in the two front quarters. Ideally, very little milk should be left in all four quarters after milking. Cows that retain their milk can develop mastitis, which is an infection of the udder. The udder gets hot, swollen, and sore. Her milk can't be used. This takes us to herd health. I expect a cow with mastitis is given antibiotics to fight the infection, and the milk can't be used until the cow recovers. That's correct. If the infection becomes severe, she may lose part of her udder. Here's an example of foot rot, an infection of the hoof. On farms with ground current, foot rot won't heal. We've seen these before. Swollen joints. It's as though they develop arthritis. Farmers complain of the same symptoms. The cow on the right is doing much better. The hardest to deal with is when a farmer finds a dead cow. The cow can be healthy one day and dead the next. 
Autopsies don't reveal much. Farmer Pete sent me this photo. Fame was a healthy animal and suddenly went downhill after calving. She was dead 24 hours after she calved, and it wasn't due to milk fever. Farmer Pete lost 12 cows in 2015. With an average cost of $3,000 per animal, he lost $36,000. Loss in milk production came to $90,000 and he failed to meet his quota. Over the life expectancy of these animals he lost three-quarter of a million dollars. Farmers can't continue to bear such losses. 2015 wasn't an unusual year. Farmer Pete lost 115 cows and 25 to 30 calves in the past nine years. If this isn't cruelty to animals, I don't know what is. Over the years, I have met farmers with similar losses. Once a cow goes down, she just can't get up. Within a day or two, she is dead. Some of the best farmers have the worst problems. This is not an example of poor management, as some would like you to believe. This is a problem of ground current. That's certainly true for Farmer Pete. He went from second in the county to 180th on his herd management score in 10 years. We will talk more about the sources of ground current in upcoming videos. I think we should stop here. Before we leave, I would like to thank Farmer Pete for sharing his story with us. For those of you who would like to learn more, here is a paper Don Hillman and colleagues wrote and published in Science of the Total Environment in 2013. Happy reading! Join us next time and learn about effects of ground current on reproduction. Hi and welcome back to Part 3. How Ground Current Affects Dairy Cow Health and Reproduction Dr. Don Hillman is joining us again to discuss how ground current affects reproduction on dairy farms. Welcome back, Don. Last time we discussed milk quality and yield. Infections, like mastitis and foot rot. And healthy animals that die suddenly. Our next topic is reproduction. This is another great concern on farms with ground current pollution. Ground current contributes to infertility and to miscarriages. Some cows are not able to get pregnant and some miscarry. Let's begin with AI. AI stands for? Correct. Artificial insemination. The dairy industry has developed a successful AI program. Farmers don't have to keep bulls. Instead, they use AI when the cow comes into heat. If the AI doesn't take, she will cycle every three weeks. Pregnancy lasts about nine months, similar to humans. Remember Farmer Pete, with the ground current problem? Well, he's had some difficulty getting his cows pregnant. Remember his cow, Fame? The cow that died after birthing? He had to use 12 straws before she became pregnant. Farmer Pete says, many of his cows have 5 to 10 heats before they become pregnant. This is not normal. work. Finally. That didn't take long. Here comes another one. Twins are rare. Calving season means a lot of work, but so good to see these calves. However, if you are going to have calves, you are going to have calving problems. Here we have an aborted fetus that is fairly well developed. This one is almost fully developed. This is one of Farmer Pete's cows. She bled for two weeks after calving. There is one point I would like to make crystal clear. No matter how good a farmer you are, you are going to have animals that have difficulty getting pregnant. Animals that will abort their fetus. 
animals that have difficult and complicated births, and some animals will die. This is normal. What isn't normal is the sheer number of illnesses and deaths on farms that have ground current pollution. How do we know if an animal has health problems because of ground current? You can measure the ground current. This is Dave Stebzer measuring electricity flowing through the ground on a dairy farm in Ontario. We met Dave in a previous video. This farm had a serious ground current problem. They were having similar symptoms with their cattle that farmer Pete talked about. If animals have symptoms we talked about last time then they are already stressed. The longer they are stressed, the more likely they are to become seriously ill. You can move an ill animal to another farm, where they don't have ground current, to see if she recovers. She may not recover if she is too far gone. The best solution is to get the current out of the ground and document changes in animal behavior, health and productivity. Whatever improves, was likely due to ground current. It's not easy. But if your animals are agitated, if they won't enter the barn or the milking parlor, if they kick at their milkers and constantly lift their feet, if their muscles twitch and if they lap at their water, if the farmer notices reduced fertility and milk yield, if their hocks are swollen and their infections won't heal, then, you can be fairly confident that the farm has a ground current problem. Thank you, Don. I hope this will help farmers recognize when they have ground current pollution on their farm. We will learn in upcoming videos what you can do about it. Once again, I would like to thank Farmer Pete for sharing his story with us. The next few slides are eye candy. Enjoy! Don, thank you for sharing all this information with us. And for those of you watching, please join us next time. Thanks for watching. In our attempt to reduce the use of fossil fuels, we are moving towards the use of green energy. However, there is one problem. When the direct current is converted to alternating current via the inverter, dirty electricity is produced. This sturdy electricity then flows along electrical wires along the ground and it comes into homes via plumbing. It can travel tens to hundreds of kilometers. This is a waveform from a solar panel that is turned off. There is very little dirty electricity. And this is when it is turned on. David Colling and I published a paper in 2011 called Wind Turbines Make Waves, Why Some Residents Near Wind Turbines Become Ill. David measured the primary neutral to earth voltage that we talked about in a previous slide. And this is what the waveform looked like before the wind turbine was installed. A year later, they were operating and producing a lot of dirty electricity that was flowing along the ground and making nearby residents sick. This is a table of the critical issues regarding ground current pollution. The 60 Hz frequency should not exceed 0.5 volts peak to peak, but this isn't measured properly as engineers use root mean squared, and this underestimates what an animal is exposed to. The dirty electricity should not exceed 10 millivolts peak to peak, and this isn't even measured. On-farm sources are the responsibility of the farmer. Off-farm sources are the responsibility of the electric utility distributor, and their role in this is often denied. Effects on animals is largely attributed to poor farming management practices rather than to ground current pollution. This is odd as often the most successful farmers develop ground current problems. Effects on humans are ignored. It is easy to determine if a dairy farmer has a ground current problem because it drastically affects milk production. Other farmers may have a problem as well, but aren't necessarily aware of it. 
Urban centers are beginning to have ground current problems as well, and these are largely ignored. Farmers can make some changes if the ground current is coming from their farm. They are motivated to fix the problem because it is more expensive not to fix it. The utilities have a number of options, but without a government mandate or legal action, they are unlikely to fix the problem on their own.